Welcome to Europe ECR 2024. My name is uh, Emanuele Barbato from Rome, Italy. And today here we are fortunate and honored to have Rasha Alalame from UK, uh, the principal investigator of the Orbital 2 trial. In fact, with Russia, we'll discuss the role of percutaneous coronary intervention today after the results of the Orbital 2 trial. Russia, uh, this was a major endeavor. Tell us something more about the patients that were considered in this trial and what was the unmet clinical need this trial was trying to address. Thank you, Emanuele. Thank you so much for having me here today. So with Orbiter 2, what we wanted to do was build on Orbiter 1 and think about stable coronary artery disease, but think about a wider population of patients, patients with single and multivessel disease, with evidence of ischemia and significant anginal symptoms. And what we wanted to ask was, what's the effect of angioplasty as a monotherapy procedure off antianginal treatment as we felt that that was actually a very important clinical question because that's often how we practice PCI. Let me understand better from a methodologic point of view. So far, we've been told by guidelines, by previous trials, that we should do all the best with medication first and only in case they failed, we can move on to PCI. You actually reverted the paradigm in Orbiter, isn't it? We did, yeah. So in Orbiter 1, we did exactly what the guidelines said. Patients were on maximally tolerated antianginal therapies, actually an average of three antianginal agents before they were randomized to PCI or placebo procedure, and we found minimal effect of additional PCI on top. So what we realized was that actually what we needed to work out was exactly how much this procedure worked, and we modeled it on renal denervation. How much does PCI work alone? And importantly, what we realized is there's a burden to our patients of taking many antianginal therapies. And in fact, there's a burden to the healthcare system to do that. So it's reasonable to test the procedure alone because what we know is an antianginal agent doesn't have a prognostic benefit. It's a bit like taking paracetamol for osteoarthritis. You can stop it and perhaps have a procedure instead. Tell us more about the main results of Orbiter 2 trial, also in light of the latest data that you just presented here at Europe ECR. So what we found for Orbiter 2 was probably a relief to the interventional cardiologist. Actually, angioplasty did work in terms of improving symptoms. It also made patients far more likely to be free from angina and free from antianginal medications, which is important to our patients versus a placebo procedure. So there was a true physical effect of PCI beyond placebo. Importantly, however, we did see that a significant proportion of patients, around 60%, had residual angina, and, or I should say residual symptoms, and the question was why? So what we've done since is actually look at uh, the Orbiter 2 secondary analysis and the first of the secondary analyses, looking at predictors of which patients get benefit. And importantly, what we found is that when your patients have significant coronary artery disease and very typical anginal features, pain that comes on an exertion, is relieved by rest, those patients will get benefit from PCI. If they have much more atypical features, shooting pain, breathlessness, etc., really your PCI won't work more than a placebo procedure. And unfortunately for those patients, you can't offer symptom relief. Do I take it right that Orbiter is really a patient-centered trial? For the first time, it's not what is relevant to the physician, but really what is relevant to the patient. It's exactly right. And in fact, what we've done here at PCR as well is present the Orbiter STAR trial, which looked at what kind of symptoms get improvement from PCI and how do you potentially even use symptom verification in the cath lab to work out which symptoms will improve. The important thing is, it seems, that our patient from both studies can tell us, at the point at which we take a history in clinic, whether their PCI will work for them. And we need to really go back to that and start thinking about that again as a predictor of response. I think what we can say is that uh, the Orbiter 2 investigator and Russia should be commended for uh, having uh, made awareness on what is relevant for percutaneous coronary intervention in patients with chronic coronary syndrome. We should really focus at patient symptoms. We should focus at angina relief. Thank you very much, Russia.